Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk to you about how DHT or dihydrotestosterone, the potent form of testosterone, may be a therapeutic remedy or even a cure or a preventative agent for prostate cancer and the general enlargement of the prostate. Now, first and foremost, it's highly probable that you've been told the opposite, that DHT and testosterone are what cause prostate cancer, the enlargement of the prostate, and also things like male pattern baldness. However, this is a massive controversial topic, and there's no physiological basis actually for any of it. And you don't need to be a physiologist or a scientist to debunk this myth and truly understand what's going on here. The only thing you really need to understand is that your androgens like testosterone and DHT are actually highly elevated in your prime and youth. So you have the highest levels of testosterone and DHT usually when you're like 16 to 21. When you're typically the healthiest, your metabolism's the fastest, you put on muscle the easiest, you have the healthiest hair, you typically don't experience hair loss or prostate cancer or prostate issues around that time. However, as you age, when those sorts of degenerative issues tend to be at their highest, you have the lowest levels of DHT and testosterone, which makes you wonder, is it really testosterone and DHT? The short answer is no, but if you wanna learn more about the true pathology of prostate cancer, which is really more so caused by estrogen dominance, having a greater amount of estrogen to your androgens, then definitely watch this video to learn a little bit more, again, about the pathology, the true pathology, I should say, of prostate cancer and prostate enlargement. Otherwise, in this video, I'd like to share with you some more of the physiological sound research behind the beneficial effects, actually, of testosterone and DHT in treating prostate cancer and preventing it. Starting off back in 1981, it was found that having a higher testosterone to estrogen ratio actually corresponded with better prostate cancer survival. And in general, the patients with higher testosterone levels had better prognosis than those who did not. However, mainstream medicine responded to these sorts of studies saying that the reason that people found relief in treatment in higher testosterone levels or injecting them with testosterone was because the testosterone turned into estrogen and it's estrogen that cures prostate cancer and all of these other issues because it's testosterone that causes it. However, what mainstream medicine tends to overlook and fails to mention is that your prostate actually has the greatest expression of DHT or specifically the enzyme 5-alpha reductase turning that testosterone into DHT and that the DHT actually is what's having the protective effect because DHT actually is going to increase or optimize the ratio of androgens to estrogens, basically ensuring that you have more androgens than you do estrogens. And that's really what you want in not just treating prostate cancer, but generally all diseases. Estrogen or high estrogen to low androgen, that ratio is commonly implicated in almost every disease that you could think of. As I talk about so often in these videos, estrogen in its roles in the body mimic the pathology of basically every disease and all aspects of aging you could think of. It disrupts the use of oxygen. It tends to increase or stimulate the production of other stress hormones by stimulating the adrenal glands. It increases your cell's affinity to water, leading to things like edema, hypoxia, and general inflammation. So estrogen is one of the major stress hormones. Again, it's a highly controversial topic, but the fact of the matter is there's plenty of studies like this one that talks about how having a high androgen ratio amongst supplementing or getting in adequate vitamin D, which is very androgenic, is a very sound therapy or remedy for things like prostate cancer. And again, if you watch that earlier video, the basic mechanisms behind the androgens here really has a lot to do with their anti-estrogen effects. Estrogen is known to directly act on and stimulate the growth of the prostate. So it's actually estrogen that 
leads to the growth of the prostate and even cancerous like cell division processes, not your androgens. So in other words, increasing the production of testosterone and more specifically DHT will help to optimize that ratio and shift the signaling away from the production of estrogen. Now, for those of you that might be interested in doing your own research beyond this video, I'd just like to point out that all of the studies on DHT as a cause for prostate cancer fail to really highlight a very important factor, which is the solvent that is used. You see, in other studies, it's been found that a bioidentical DHT is actually therapeutic for treating prostate cancer. Not to mention that people with prostate cancer and issues tend to have the highest levels of estradiol or estrogen in low levels of testosterone and DHT. However, in the studies where DHT was found to increase the risk of prostate cancer, there's one really important factor that's overlooked, which is that they weren't using a bioidentical DHT. They're using a DHT that was dissolved in benzoate and propanate, which makes the DHT incredibly toxic, which is probably why it increased the risk or the proliferation of the cancer, not the DHT itself. So those are important factors to really consider and things that people tend to sort of, you know, entirely look over in these studies. They go, oh, it was DHT that increased the risk of cancer, so is DHT. You need to consider things like the solvents and the types of DHT or the type of herb or whatever it is that's being used to really have a full picture and a complete understanding of what's going on. So basically to summarize here, it's actually high estrogen and high prolactin and usually low testosterone, low DHT and low androgen. So an issue of estrogen dominance that shifts the signaling to the production of cancerous cells or the proliferation of cancer and not to mention that estrogen directly causes the prostate to enlarge and to become cancerous. So something that would prove more therapeutic for treating prostate cancer naturally would be to first and foremost balance this ratio of estrogen to androgens. And you could take something like nettle root, which they actually use in German hospitals to treat prostate cancer, as I talk about in this video, because of its ability to lower estrogen to such low levels. That's going to help balance that ratio. But you could also take proactive steps to increase your production of testosterone and ultimately DHT, which would even more efficiently balance that ratio. So with that being said, I have a couple of tips for you to help optimize your DHT levels naturally, something that you would actually want to do despite all the controversial opinions around DHT. It's an androgen, has potent anti-aging effects, and in most healthy humans, DHT is highest when they're young, vibrant, and robustly energetic. So with that being said, here are 10 very simple tips for increasing your DHT levels. The first would be the most obvious lower the estrogen in your body. I have a couple of tips for you on how to do this. Basically, the first is going to be remove all of the estrogenic foods and substances from your life. Watch this video to learn about what those are. The second thing that you could do is, again, take anti-estrogen herbs like nettle root, which lowers estrogen to nearly indetectable levels. The other thing that you could do is slowly but surely lose any excess body fat. Estrogen tends to store in body fat and especially if that body fat is polyunsaturated from growing up eating a sad, standard American diet, that's going to trigger the aromatization of your testosterone into estrogen. So keeping generally a lower body fat index is going to be beneficial for optimizing your androgens. Also, putting on healthy muscle. The more muscle you have, the more androgens you're going to produce. But I will caution against trying to lose weight too fast. That can actually be stressful and trigger more estrogen. The second thing I'm going to recommend is that you boost your testosterone levels. If you haven't already, watch this video series, which gives you all of the best tips for naturally increasing testosterone levels. And this is important because testosterone is the precursor to DHT. So if you want good DHT levels, you want to have the groundwork set in place, which is a healthy level of testosterone. My third tip for increasing DHT, and this is something that I've seen personally a couple of different times in my life, and it's directly tied with boosting testosterone, but that's going to be to lift heavy weight. I would highly recommend avoiding cardio and endurance workouts. That tends to increase the estrogen in your body and cortisol. There's actually studies that have found that your estrogen levels can double in the blood after chronic cardio-like 
endurance exercise. So avoid that exercise and lift really heavy weights. I found personally that after lifting heavy weights, shifting away from endurance athletics to bodybuilding basically, doing a lot of deadlifts and whatnot. I was able to grow a really solid beard, my jaw structure started to change, and obviously I put on muscle. My hair got darker, all good things. And the best thing about lifting heavy weights is that the amount of stress put on your body is actually less than running five miles because you really only need to work out for 10 minutes to get a good workout in, and it's more natural, more functional, and again, less stressful. My fourth tip for you would be to take proactive steps to increase the production of carbon dioxide. So your thyroid is actually what drives the production of carbon dioxide. So doing things to increase thyroid function, like take ashwagandha, KSM 66, eat a pro-thyroid-like diet, Generally, take care of the thyroid in whatever way that you can. I have tons of tips here on the channel as to how to do that. We'll increase the production of carbon dioxide, and that will have a beneficial effect on the production of all of your androgens. You can do tons of other things. You can wear those masks when you work out. For me, I'm fortunate. I live at 7,000 feet elevation, so I'm getting that carbon dioxide all of the time. But generally, if you take good care of the thyroid, then you're gonna produce enough carbon dioxide. And again, this will have a beneficial effect on your hormones. And to wrap these all up, I'm just gonna go through these pretty much one by one because they're all nutritionally related. You wanna make sure you get enough dietary carbohydrates. That's something that many people overlook. Your liver uses glycogen, that's sugar, stored sugar, to perform all 500 of its functions. If there's not enough liver glycogen, its abilities become significantly impaired. And the liver activates the enzymes that are responsible for producing testosterone and DHT. The liver is also responsible for metabolizing or destroying excess estrogen. So something as simple as ensuring you're getting enough dietary carbohydrates is going to be hugely beneficial for increasing the production of DHT amongst improving your overall health. The next is also ensuring that you're getting enough protein. Next to carbohydrates, the liver needs nitrogen, which it gets from protein. So having a generally high to moderate carbohydrate and protein intake is gonna be a very good thing for the liver and therefore your hormones. And in regards to fats, basically, you don't need too much fat to ensure good thyroid function. You just wanna make sure you're getting the right fats. So avoid the polyunsaturated fats. Those are typically from vegetable sources, vegetable oils, things like flax, hemp, even avocado oil, canola, soy, peanut, sesame, etc. All those things actually have overlapping effects with estrogen in the body. They tend to stimulate the circulation or liberation of free fatty acids in the body, which again have overlapping effects with estrogen, making them estrogenic. So what you're gonna wanna do instead is consume those saturated fats. These are typically your animal fats with the exception of coconut oil. So things like grass-fed butter, ghee, egg yolks, tallow, lard, etc. Not only do these saturated fats promote respiration and thyroid function, but they, most of them contain cholesterol, which is a building block for all of your androgen hormones. And my last and final tip for increasing DHT and ultimately balancing the androgen to estrogen ratio, which will be beneficial for prostate health, is to consume good quality coffee. Good quality coffee has many, many benefits. We talk about all of them in this video, and we use it and tons of our recipes because of all of its beneficial effects, its ability to synergize with progesterone, which is a precursor to testosterone, which is a building block to DHT. So consuming good quality coffee, given that you're consuming a moderate amount, not too much at once, is a good way to actually balance the hormones and improve thyroid function while you're at it. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys in this video. The fact of the matter is, despite conflicting, controversial research and oftentimes biased research with no physiological background whatsoever, DHT and testosterone are typically deficient in people with prostate cancer and cancers in general, and estrogen tends to be at its highest. So whether it's correcting prostate cancer or prostate issues, or you're just trying to rebalance yourself, regain your energy and rejuvenate your body, what you're gonna want to do ultimately is increase the ratio of these youthful androgens, which generally increase the rate of metabolism, they energize you, they are associated with youth and health, and decrease the amount of estrogens and stress substances in your body. And again, if you're interested in doing some of your own research and checking out some of the studies that I referenced in this video, I'll link all of that beneath this video in the description box below. 
Otherwise, if you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for future videos. Share this video with anybody that might find it useful or helpful if you have a relative or a friend with prostate issues. Also, be sure to watch the other videos I might have referenced throughout this video to get a complete picture and for supplementing with any of the herbs I recommend throughout this video, especially nettle root, be sure to check out our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.